Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to Train Sim World 2020. We're in the Peninsula Corridor route, and this is the Caltrain Baby Bullet DLC. We're in the we're at the other end. We are in the Bombardier CT97 bi-level cab car. Wow, I'm amazed that I got through all that. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is get started up, get some power going. Once we have power going, we get the doors open, start loading passengers. And once we load passengers, then we can hop back in here and do the rest of this stuff. We go right over here. The doors we go right up here, like so. And beautiful, we are loading passengers. So now we come back down here. We are going to turn on headlights, number lights, console lights. We're going to turn a little heat on because it's uh, early spring. We're going to close this door, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, what else do we need to do? We need to flip this right here. There we are. And I believe, wait until 1749.30. There is 1749.30. Close the doors. And if everything is, is correct, we should be good to go. Okay, we're going to Mountain View. We're in San Jose. We're just going to go up to Mountain View. Short video today. Brake pressure comes down. All right. And we're good. We are good. There's a little power. Oh, hang on. Got to put her in gear. I knew I'd forget something. There we go. And our power is coming from the other end of the train. I, there's a nice detail in let's hop outside there we are that's us there's a nice detail so this is a cab car and like the the cab car in uh, in the NEC route and in fact like the other cab car for the other loco the other set on the Peninsula Corridor route I believe these trains don't have enough room to turn around and so they make the trip forward one way, and then they just go the re reverse trip the other way. So these trains will go to the other end. These trains travel from San Francisco to San Jose in this direction with this MP36PH-3C in front. And then on the return trip, we're in this cab car. But in the sim, that's the only way that you can make the trip. There's no way to go from San Jose to San Francisco using this end of the train. So they can't turn around in real life. They can't turn around in the sim. I like details like that. I really do. I'm also fascinated by these cab cars. I don't know what it is about them, but they just seem, uh, I don't know. I guess it's the same reason the Long Island Railroad Locos are so, uh, I don't know, man. They're just uh, kind of a novelty. They're quaint. I don't know. So we come back in here and, yep, great detail everything is running super fast uh, we're at 75 fps i would really like to see these screens be active i'm not sure what i know some of them are on some of the german routes but it seems like on the u.s routes these are all just static and uh, oh no i take that back on the nec route on the uh on the it's not the acela it's the other amtrak loco they are active there you can do some things with them. But I'd like to see a little bit more, you know, a little bit more something. However, I'll take what I can get. And I know they are continuing to optimize these routes. And they're getting faster and faster and smoother and smoother. And looking better and better. So credit where credit is due. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? I think that's about it. I went with, uh, it's early morning. It's just about 8 o'clock in the morning. But it is, in sim, it is autumn. And it's misty and foggy. It's really misty and foggy where I am now in real life. So I figured I'd go with this. And we are, let me check one more thing. Yep, got all my switches set correctly. This is a timetable, what they used to call services, they now call timetable. So this is possibly reverse that. Yeah, what they used to call something, they now call the opposite thing. I can't even remember. My brain is turning to mush. I can't remember, but this is a service. And there goes my voice. This is a service rather than a scenario. 
so we just hopped right in there was no uh, there was no screen there was no welcome there was no nothing as soon as I hit start it jumped us in and that's why we didn't have time to do a walk around and that sort of thing and why we had to immediately get the thing started if we want to be on time getting to Mountain View but yeah I'm, I'm very pleased with the last couple DLC from Dovetail there were some in the middle I think uh, you know we started with CSX Heavy Hall and that was great and then we had a few DLC and they were uh, novelty right I'll take it and then the the few DLC after that was sort of uh, all right now what right I feel like we maybe we're caught in a bit of a rut Dovetail what are you doing but then these last few they've they seem to have hit their stride again somebody asked me in a comment should I get train sim 2020 or train sim world 2020 and I think the when you when you look at the train simulator franchise which is now what like 10 years old possibly even older and I think the technology under it is even older than that but all the DLC for it you know as I look forward at train sim world 2020 I really have no idea where they're going with the DLC I don't know if there will ever be steam and I don't know if that's because of the new engine that they're on and various limitations with graphics and other things if if steam and smoke just wouldn't look that good I feel like the diesel smoke that we get from the diesel electric locos in and from the from the straight diesel locos on some of the UK routes I feel like the the diesel smoke we get is adequate uh, diesel smoke and huge billowing clouds of steam are slightly different things to try to do in a video game but I've got no complaints so I don't know if I, I don't know what the what the holdup is on Steam because so many people want it I heard a really good explanation for why there aren't bullet trains and that is that the routes aren't long enough to run them on you would only get five or six minutes of of runtime at 250 miles an hour on a 30 mile route and if you made the routes longer to accommodate those trains they would be the DLC would be a hundred gig so that makes sense but steam I'm, I'm curious what the holdup is there so I guess the the takeaway from that for me is what are the DLC for train sim world going to look like compared to the DLC for the train simulator franchise I think if you're into a lot of variety you want to go with Train Simulator. And if you're into uh, smoother, cleaner graphics and a more contemporary game with less content, then you would want to go with Train Sim World. Every time we pass a train in these newer DLC, I'm amazed. And I, I actually did fire up CSX Heavy Hall, and it is still an FPS pig. So I feel like it's not just the underlying sort of game engine itself that has optimization problems but I think it's some of the scenery and models and assets in these DLC because CSX Heavy Hall really doesn't run very well compared to this game the reason I mention it specifically now is we're at 80 FPS and as we pass that that train we drop to 70 whereas in CSX Heavy Hall the other day when I tested it same graphics settings we are at 45 FPS and when we pass another local we drop to 30 so these new these new DLC are they just seem to be made better and I did I, I bought train simulator 20 I bought it last year I bought 2019 and it's one of the few games that I've ever refunded I was really really disappointed with the way that the graphics look and I know for for the diehards for the fans of the game what draws them to it is not necessarily the graphics, but the gameplay itself and the amount of DLC that's available. So to answer that question, uh, should I get Train Sim World or the Train Simulator franchise, the most current iteration of it? I have, I have no answer for you. I would say it depends entirely on your priorities, on your system, and what you're looking to get out of the game, which I suppose could be said of any game. Should I get this or should I get that? Well, that's depends entirely on you it's entirely up to you I prefer train sim world and I'm I'm hoping it continues to move in the good direction that it seems to be moving in I think it's a, a great game a bit of a rocky start 
but that's been uh, that seems to be a theme lately with a lot of games I blame it on investors a lot of these companies have uh, if they're not publicly traded then they have uh, VC money they've got somebody's somebody has leaned in and once you put somebody in your pocket once you put a business in your pocket they do what you say so some of these decisions I, I really do wonder about them but hey you know what at the end of the day if it's that much of a problem for you as a gamer as a consumer just don't buy those games and I'm when I say that as always I'm saying that to myself not to you but if it's if it's that bad for you if uh, day one games are that frustrating if early access games are are too much for you or betas just stay away from them and stick with the games that have been out for a year and have patched up a few times and they're solid and stable and the improvements have been made it's a lot a lot less stressful a lot easier on the nerves it's funny how how demanding we are as consumers some of it i feel is justified you've got my money you've got my money now where's my game and some of it honestly is us just being a little bit entitled a little bit spoiled you know it's not it'll be done when it's done so we try to strike that balance you know developers need to have their feet held to the fire they need to be kept accountable but at the same time we need to understand that you don't always get something just because you holler about it it's the way of the world right so we'll be in into mountain view in another minute or two and this will be i will call it maybe a 15 minute video yeah i just wanted to show you this cab car and uh that's all for the Caltrain Baby Bullet DLC. And then next video will probably be the GP38 in Canadian National Livery. Man, that industrial area. Well, you'll see it in the next video, but that industrial area is vast. It is, I feel like there is more to do in that industrial area than there is. I mean, it's just one small part of one DLC, but I feel like there's more to do in that industrial area than there is to do in entire DLCs, other DLCs in Trains and World. Right, so we will start bringing our speed down here. How are we doing on time? Got two minutes to go about a mile. I think we should be okay. And now I'm hoping, I, I, I don't understand this either. I would like to see something done about this. I can't find a way to fix it myself. But it seems like every time I start the game, it turns back on the colored tiles that appear at a station stop to indicate exactly where you're meant to stop the train. I don't like that. It's immersion braking, and I can't seem to turn it off in a way that it stays off. You know what I mean? I want to turn it off. I want to keep it off. But I feel like every time I turn it off, it comes back on. Although, although, it appears to be off at the moment. Okay, cool. I like that. Let's see if we can nail this stop. Right about like so. All right. Coast right up to the end here. Time. Oh yeah. We're a minute early. another loco pulling in beautiful I do like this game I really do there we are now I think I pulled up just a bit too far and I am across the the crossing at the end here oh no no you can totally get through there be a little spooky walking that close to a train but you can get through there at any rate, there you have it, folks. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Train Sim World 2020. This is the CT97 cab car, part of the bi-level bi -level car, part of the Caltrain Baby Bullet DLC. There. I didn't make it through it quite as well the second time, but I got there. See you next time. Take care.